so hi there again maple lovers um, this video has been prompted by uh, Emma one of the uh, my viewers who quite rightly asked the question you know where are we going to be when these trees grow you know 20 years time when my trees have grown substantially when her trees have grown so I've dug out um, some pictures here from Western Bert Arboretum in the UK here we have Sirio as you saw there very large specimen um, it's only taken 20 odd years to get there in contrast we have Sangu Kaku here um, which I would guess is a similarish kind of size and as you see that's dating back to 1988 so growth rates can very much vary I suppose here's a little uh, garnet um, I call him Alf if anyone gets that joke from the UK let me know um, as you see it's in a large container so it's got a lot more space and I do believe that these aces will kind of grow to occupy the space you give them um, which is a key point really so there's an orange dream planted out it's, it's grown substantially and there's one the same age so as you can see because it's in a pot it's um, much more restricted another thing to consider actually is the habit or shape of these trees this is Jerry Swartz, um, founded by Billy Swartz in America. And what you can see is a very kind of upright sort of habit. So imagine if that grows another um, two or three feet, uh, it'll sort of go over the top of the fence, I suppose, really. I'm not sure what my neighbor will think, but uh, it's not going to occupy too much space. Where this firecracker here, because it's a weeping sort of spreading it will go taller but it will also probably land up as wide as it is tall so that actually might be a more of an issue for space than the seemingly bigger tree below it even though you know you might not think that here we've got blood good so the habit as we call it of this tree is it kind of grows outwards and upwards so i think perhaps the opportunity to put more trees aces or other plants underneath it is a little bit more limited because it does grow preloads the ground and I've seen these in the local area they're lovely they're very common but they do have this low spreading habit here we have um, a tree found by Tim Tawambi in America and that uh, Tawambi's red sentinel it's called grows really upright so again it would um, occupy a very much smaller amount of space as indeed this little princess which I really adore um, very loved by bonsai uh, enthusiasts what you can do with these trees though and other trees like it or many aces is just sort of train them up like that uh, you often see these in garden centers and you think what on earth they are actually but once trained up and staked up in that way they can occupy a much more uh, smaller area which can be useful if you've got a small patio small area this is um, a dissectum and as you can see much more wide sprawling habit it's absolutely gorgeous but again it's going to occupy more space whereas this little fella um, a new acquisition actually um, very very lacy leaves so I think that even though it occupies some space you would see straight through it so it visually it wouldn't sort of block out the light as much Okashima here um, lovely little acquisition as you can see already even though it's very young it's growing straight upwards so again that could fit in a corner it could fit against the fence quite easily whereas this Ryusen has a much more dome spreading habit so it will, won't actually get that wide because it will gradually droop down um, so therefore it's going to form sort of a I don't know a four or five foot wide tree that grows in height whereas this is Sakazuki as you can see is growing as fast outwards as it is upwards really so that the habit or the shape of the tree I think is really really critical just to say that um, as these are pot grown the growth will be massively restricted compared to putting them in the ground I'd say probably half as much um, and obviously when they reach the sort of they get slightly pop pound that will slow down even further so one key tip really is if you if you don't want your races to grow too big keep them in pots but ideally you know a selection like this one called Shana will really help because it is a dwarf tree and it will stay small um, so that's uh, kind of off to a, a better start really and here we've got um, just to say this is another blood good but there's always variation because of the environment and this one decided to grow straight up really 
I actually find that really surprising and amazing because they're genetically identical and yet they still have different, uh, they still look different to one another. So here I'm just sort of trying to say that uh, it's worth considering, you know, we may have very little horizontal space in our gardens, but height wise, um, we can use that to our advantage. So the taller trees there with things planted or potted underneath them uh, means you can get a lot more in a, in a smaller area, I suppose. Here we have the uh, Jerry Swartz. I found a photo of um, very not that much bigger than mine, I suppose. And yet huge age age difference. Um, so aces just keep on growing. That there is no final height. Um, the, the only relevant figure is how big they are after ten years, perhaps something like that. But as you can see, that's twenty years old and is not much bigger than mine. Also, bear in mind you've got very different growing habits. So this this one crazily is much much wider than it is tall. So making that selection and uh, is really important at that stage. This is an orange dream. Um, there's Sharon there, just for comparison, height-wise, quite a decent-sized tree, but wouldn't wouldn't offer much opportunity for underplanting, because obviously it's sort of a, a big, lovely round ball. Whereas this one here, um, kind of would. Um, you could grow something like that, and then you know plant other races and use that shade underneath really to uh, to advantage. Again, you've also got trees like this. They're, they're quite open space. They don't sort of visually occupy so much space, really, because of their very nature. Um, as you see, this is a, a Coralina Group 1. It's a lovely pink colour, um, but a very different proposition to, to some other aces. Now, these trees obviously will grow in the ground over many, many years to enormous heights. But it is, as I'm trying to say, it will depend very much on how you plant it. Um, you can prune them, of course, as well. That will that'll help keep them down to size. But things like that, Atropopyrium, etc., um, can go to very, very large large sizes. This is um, an, a beautiful plant, actually, that you can see is very tall. Um, it is, in fact, an Ace Grisium. So this is Western Bert Arboretum. I'll probably do more videos on that if people are interested. But it's the paper bark maple, which is fascinating. But, you know, how long has it taken to get to that size, I suppose? Well, as you can see, this was planted in 1938, which is just amazing. I've actually heard, and I think I believe, that um, this was the first one that came into the country, imported from China. So, uh, just a magnificent specimen, really. Also, perhaps worth remembering that these uh, lovely trees can... They transplant pretty well, actually. Um, so, they could be moved within a garden if they do uh, occupy too much space or indeed um, move from house to house. I've seen that done before. Of course, me and my wife also have three children, so some of them, if I need to lose a few, if they get a bit too big, they could uh, form part of their inheritance, perhaps. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you like and subscribe. And yes, share this video perhaps with, with others that might enjoy. Take care.